This is coming to you by Family Outreach Ministry and Foundation from your regular host, Stess, BC Olu. I love to be here with you. We have another beautiful topic we want to just treat in a jiffy now, and you'll be listening to it in series. The word sex, we are not referring to gender now. But we are referring to the real world sex that is intercourse in marriage, not outside marriage. Sex in marriage. What is sex in marriage? Sex in marriage is a vital issue. Marriage is an ordinance of God, and one of the purposes of marriage is procreation and also to prevent fornication in marriage. And so I want us to be very careful with this. A lot of churches are not treating it, and they are, the pastors are having problems, their wives are having problems, the members are having problems. And yet, we are afraid of treating this topic, sex. Sex has one wonderful magic it does in marriage. A family that is happy, watch them very well. Their relationship is okay. There is joy in that home. It's because one thing is not lacking there. Sex is not lack. If there is lack of sex in that family, there will be trouble in the family. Sex is very important in marriage. It cements the love of both of them. Some look at it, I have been in so many conferences where these things are discussed. Wives saying, oh, we have a lot of questions concerning sex in marriage. My husband believes that it is when we want to make children that we have to meet. Some say, oh, um, the Bible says it, it, we can only abstain from one another during prayers. And my husband is, or my spouse is the type that all the time is on the mountain praying and fasting. And so neglecting the partner, either the wife or the husband. And this is causing a lot of a little temptation that comes across the way of either of them, they will fall. Is that really true? No. God's ordinance is for you to have it in marriage and for you to cement your love. It's not for only procreation. For making children, it's not only for making children. You both must enjoy it in marriage. It's very, very important. Some have problem of frigidity. If you have such problem, please you can get us. We can get talking with you and give you some solution to this problem. Some, the husband or the wife, may have low um, sex, sexual urge and this is affecting the partner. How then do we come to a balance? We have to help ourselves. Where the husband's urge is low, low libido, or it's the wife that has low libido, what do we do? Both of them must be ready to help one another. It's not a time for both of you to ignore and say, ah, ah you, too, you love sex too much. No, it's not a time for that. You both must come to reason with yourselves. Darling, this skin is getting too much because there are some people, they want it every day. That is on the high side, it's too much. 
At not... some, in two, one month, they may not even feel like it. It's not because he's an unfaithful person in his house or in, to his family. No. But the problem is that he has low libido. And this is happening to a lot of people. Low. Then, for somebody who has low libido and there is frigidity in the woman, how do we help such person? There must be time for fumbling. Romance is what we call fumbling. Create more time. Look at the portion of the body of your spouse that tickles him or her. Try to work on that. Know your body, know your, the parts of your body. Those areas, they are very important for you to know. It's not a thing you have to ignore. When you are not feeling like, I have seen, I'm a married counselor, I hear a lot of things that people say. Some will say, he does not call for it, she does not call for it, it is only me, only me. Yes, you can help her or help him to call for it. So, when the spouse is even making advances, he does not know. You must know. Get yourself dressed beautiful, smell nicely. Let him know that you are available. He will come near. Even when the libido is low, you can help. You too, you can romance that spouse. And when you do that, a lot of changes will come round. And you see him improving by day. It is very, very important. So many families are disintegrated because of this reason. The wife looks out. The husband looks out. Where Christ had been the God and Lord of their family because of this problem. They are looking out. They have become an infidel. And it's not the plan and purpose of God. Why do we marry? We, the reason, purpose of marriage is this particular one, very, very important, procreation. And for both of you to stay together. And if you are to stay together, this is part of the game. And you have to address it. If you have such a problem, please do not say it is not Christianly. I've heard that from someone who said it. It's not right. You must, because you are in marriage, have to enjoy it. Both parties. Not one rushing and poor is finished. Not um, this one saying, oh, oh, hissing. Mm, 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 mm. Yes, you must look for a very conducive atmosphere to express your love to each other. When you do that, the atmosphere will, will enhance your love. And make your love to grow for one another every day. When one is not around, you'll be missing him or her seriously. Because she's not around. This aspect of marriage is very vital. And I pray as many that are not there. Or has caused separation and problem in that marriage. I pray with this little thing that I have spoken with you and taught you. You will build up your marriage. Some, because of their body odor, the spouse does not want to come near. Please, in this, you must be the kind of person who takes frequently your bath and use some deodorants to kill those smells. It may not be your cause or the re you, 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 are, you are the reason why this thing is happening. There are some hormones in your body that are secreting it. And you can combat it. You can fight it and become okay. At certain times of some women, it happens. And in men too, it does. We can kill that by a lot of those things. As you do so, it will be well with you.